I'm approaching Numbers 24 differently because I think the original intent of Numbers 24 is to show what favor looks like. Invariably, most people are within the thought pattern of Israel going into the land and uh, settling in that land as promised by God. And this is true. I believe this is happening. This is part of the argument. However, there was um, an, an interception by Balaam with Balak to stop an attack on Israel while this was happening. Now, there were certain attacks that took place and they won. Not saying that they would not have won against Balak, but the point is, what's being shown here is favor, where they didn't have to fight up to this point. Not saying that they won't have to fight. When Joshua gets into the land, there's going to be a completely different element after Moses dies. But we're not there yet, because there's still the five lords of the Philistines that will be discussed later on. But we're just talking about right now. We're talking about Aaron dying, Eleazar taking over as high priest. Moses is still alive, although he's about to pass on as well. Not, not in numbers, or not right now, but you know later on at Deuteronomy and that sort of thing. But we're addressing the issue now. What does favor look like in this particular instance, in this particular phase, in this particular place in Numbers chapter 24? So you have to, by the way, this is for my grandchildren don't want to ever forget that this is my my ability this is one of the few thing few things I can do to leave a legacy for you because education is being taken out and I want to make sure that I leave you something this is for my brothers and sisters in Kenya where education has been taken away and these thought patterns have not been discussed widely amongst you, amongst your rabbis, amongst your religious leaders, let alone educational leaders. And my brothers and sisters in Ghana, God bless you all. And anyone else that this helps, please like and share it on whatever platform you're hearing it or seeing it or both. If it helps you or help other people. But we can't really get into the story unless you pay, or you're paying attention to Balak or Moab, which has a history, a very deep history. They all come from the same region historically. But Balaam is interesting because he understands history. He hears from God because he's taking the time to, to listen to what his voice says. Something's going to be said here that I want you to I want to point out that hasn't necessarily be, been said up to this point about anyone concerning Balaam. We all need favor. I know I need favor. I have hopefully done the work 
to earn favor sometime in the future. Because <laughs> I've certainly done the work to destroy favor. A lot of it wasn't deserved. Some of it was. Like I've said in the past, I've done things that I look back on and I thank God, God has forgiven me and I'm working on myself by moving forward, being transparent, being accountable to those I can be accountable to, to improve those areas of my life so that there's favor. Reason why you need favor or how you get favor looks like what we're about to talk about here in Numbers 24. Someone looks back historically concerning not only who you become, but who you were. And intercedes for you. Now, I'm talking about personal, I'm talking about business, I'm talking about so socially, I'm talking about politically. These are principles that we live by. You, you have to understand that whether you do right or you do wrong, there still are people who come into agreement with you to help you. It's the quality of the person that you're interested in coming to help you. Because based upon that, it will be the quality to keep those relationships. It will be the quality of your decision making with those people in your lives that will keep you in favor. In other words, if you have to compromise yourself to get a relationship, you're going to have to compromise yourself to keep that relationship. If you act with integrity to get a relationship, you're going to have to act with integrity to keep that relationship. There are sex groups of people in our world that want you to move as they move. Right or wrong. You have to make a decision on what moves you're interested in making. When I was younger, I didn't really think about the moves. I just thought about the information and what was taught to me. So when I started in the automobile industry, when they told me to speak a certain way, I spoke a certain way. And when I got an excellent result, um, they paid me a bonus. regardless of the integrity of the information. That's what favor looks like. Favor comes and is like a dollar bill or a SETI or a shilling. It's nondescript. It can come from good, it can come from bad. The question is, what kind of favor do you want? I can tell you I want favor based on my integrity today. I didn't understand that when I was younger. But today, I've been working on becoming a better person, regardless of what losses I suffer in becoming that better person. People still will see you as that bad person because they don't necessarily walk in forgiveness although they say they do that's why I want to read this to you so that you understand the importance and the power of your history I'm adopted I'm adopted into uh, the bloodline of Christ the way I see it Everyone doesn't see you that way. That's why you have to find people who see you the way you see yourself. If you want favor from people who walk 
and forgiveness and grace and mercy and that sort of thing, you have to be one who does so. So that you can attract those who do so. Numbers chapter 24, and when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times would seek for enchantment. In other words, he didn't speak against them. It was the favor of God on Israel's life. The 13 tribes, I'm including Levi, that caused their enemy, in this case, Balaam and Balak, to stand down. Verse two, and Balaam lift up, lifted up his eyes and he saw Israel abiding. His eyes is his understanding that there was nothing he can do. That's going to be proven here. According to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Wait a minute. Isn't that a New Testament terminology? The Spirit of God came upon him? Have we heard that yet? This, this is an important moment in our journey to Revelation because Balaam is an important piece to be recognized in our journey. The reason why is because we can fight the battles that God has already set up for us to win. But in this case, you get to see one of the people that God uses to fight our battles. And that's the Baal, the spirit of Baal. Balaam had to see Israel a certain way for Balak not to attack. Don't discount that. They for they forwent an attack because of how Balaam saw them and how God revealed himself to Balaam. He opened his eyes. Verse three, and he took him and he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, that's what it says in verse four, he hath said, which heard the words of God. He heard the words. That's what he saw. He heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling, but having his eyes open, how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob. That's history. Then he follows up. And I'm going to leave it here for today. This will be a short video because this is something I really want to focus on. Thy tabernacles, O Israel. Goodly tents. That's where we start off. Jacob and his tents. Before they got to Egypt, Balaam had to know about Jacob and his tents. Because that was before they got to Egypt. And we've talked about Jacob because we've been going through the Torah. And it wasn't that they were perfect because, you know, um, the sons were crazy. <laughs> Some of them <laughs> were um, didn't do everything right. But how Jacob held his family together, even after imprisoning or causing to be imprisoned their second youngest brother, how Jacob governed with humility and love respect of neighbors love of family respect of neighbors the 
I believe it was Jacob's example of wrestling with God to hold on to those values, to learn those values, to demonstrate those values in tough times, in tents. God granted him favor in a dead space where he thought his son was dead and brought him into Egypt during the toughest time of his life, which will be talked about a little bit here after we start reading about the valleys. But he jumped from that all the way up to the tabernacles of Israel, which is after he came into Egypt. And the elevation of the kingdom of God, which has not been described this way yet, but it is the kingdom of God that brought prosperity to Egypt. So there's a recognition of ability, of God being with this group of people, these multiple tribes, under one banner. Called Israel. Name changed when they became a country, when they became a unified group that went through for 400 years opposition. And God once again brought another Joseph in the, in the name of Moses bring them out of their circumstances and lead them to this place now. They've been through this before. Balaam recognizes that. He recognizes the history. He recognizes the, 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 the desire for a group of people, not one individual, but for a group of people who are drawn to the integrity of the kingdom of God. How can he speak against it? He also is a man under the authority because this same God has granted him power to prosper. How can he not recognize what's happening? Cash App Dollar Sign, Mr. Paul Dozier.